In this video, I teach you how to create and resolve tension in your guitar licks so that you can create cooler guitar solos that have a lot more emotion in them. Now, I'm not talking about tension in your body or your hands or anything like that. I'm talking about tension in the actual music that you create. Half steps are the best interval to use to create tension and release tension because there is a massive amount of dissonance inherent in half steps. Now, great guitar players use that dissonance to create tension, and then they use the consonance of the half step to release or resolve it. The best part is all of the stuff I'm gonna teach you is really easy to learn. Hi, I'm Tom Hess, and today I want to help you create great guitar solos using five super cool guitar licks based on half steps and tension and release. So grab your guitar and let's get started. So what I'm gonna do here is begin by playing a few pairs of half steps. And I want you to listen to the tension and then the release of the dissonance as I do so. All right, so what you've heard there is I played uh, D sharp and E. So I begin by bending D sharp up to sound like E. The backing track is essentially just an E major chord. Now this note E is a consonant. It's in the chord, it's the root of the chord. So it's not tense. But when we release the bend, this is now D sharp, the major seventh. And it's technically a dissonance. Now it's a dissonance that sounds cool and a lot of people like, and some people even hear the major seven sometimes as some sort of a sweet consonance, but it really is technically a dissonance. And uh, we can create tension as we release this note, the E. And now we have tension there in the uh, major seventh, in the D sharp note. Then what happens is, I played G sharp and I bent it up to sound like A. Now A is definitely not in the E major chord. So it is the fourth or the 11th. It is a dissonance. It is cause, uh, causing tension. And we resolve that tension by releasing it back down to G sharp, which of course is the third of the E major chord. It's in the chord. So we, res we create tension here, and we release it here, okay? And then we go up to D sharp, we do the same thing we did down at the fourth fret, we're just doing it on octave higher. So this is E now, the root. And we release this E note down to D sharp, and that creates a new tension here, a point of dissonance. And then we're up here on the 21st fret, bending G sharp again to sound like A. So this is definitely tense here over the E chord, and then we resolve that tension down a half step. So in all of these little pairs, uh, D sharp to E and G sharp to A, one of those two notes over the E chord here is going to be in the triad, in the chord, and one is not going to be in the chord. So that the consonant pitch is the note that's in the chord, and the distance is the note that's not in the chord. So wherever you have dissonance, you have tension. Wherever you have a root, you generally have resolution. Okay, so that's how that works. And, and you, if, if we change the chord from E to some other chords in the key, then sometimes the roles of the two notes would flip and reverse, where maybe this note, which was consonant over the E chord, might become dissonant over, let's say, an A major chord which would also be in this key. We'll take a look at that in a later example. Now, before we go any further, I created a video here on YouTube that you might wanna check out. It's called The Ultimate One Note Guitar Solo Guide, and I think that video will be very useful for you to see in combination with this video, because you'll have a lot of ideas that you can use, as I said, in combination, that will help you to create more emotion in guitar solos using only a small amount of notes. 
So in this backing track, we have an A major chord being played right now, moving to a C sharp minor chord, C sharp minor. So it goes back to A here, A major. There's some other notes added, but it's basically A major. And then C sharp minor here. So check this out. So what we have going on there is when the A chord happens, when you hear the A chord, I'm playing the note D sharp and bending it up to sound like E. So the E chord is consonant, it's in the A chord. So it sounds cool. Right there is dissonant. The D sharp note is the raised 11th pitch over the chord. Okay, it's the sharp 11. So it's always dissonant over that chord, but it sounds very, very cool. Let's hear that again. This note is in the chord. That note isn't in the chord. So now let's talk about the C sharp minor chord. When that chord plays, I'm gonna bend up to A, which is not in the chord at all. There it is. I release the note down to G sharp, which is in the chord, and that releases all of that tension, okay? So we're setting up tension through dissonance and we're resolving it with consonants. And we'll show you that over the C sharp minor chord here. There it's resolved. Here's a consonant pitch over A. There's dissonance. There's dissonance over C sharp. Now it's resolved to G sharp. All right, so you hear that sometimes the upper note is the consonant pitch and then the lower note is dissonant and it is creating tension and sometimes it's reversed where the upper note is the dissonant one and then you go down to resolve that tension uh, by going to a consonant note. That was the example here. So over the C sharp minor chord, that's definitely dissonant and it gets resolved there and it sounds really cool. It's a great way to add a lot of feel to whatever it is that you're playing. And if you want to learn more about how to put more emotion into your guitar solos, I've got a video on exactly that topic here on YouTube, and you can check it out right now. You might enjoy that video in combination with this one. All right, so what you're going to hear next is a C major chord in the backing track, and I'm going to play a C major arpeggio on top of it, so nothing really that special there. But the final note of the arpeggio, I'm going to add one note to it, which would be the major seventh note, that note will be B on the high E string, and you're, you're hearing the B right after, right after the consonant root C, and this note helps to set up that B note in our ear, so let's take a listen to what it sounds like. All right, so that sounds pretty cool hearing that just that little half step on the top of the arpeggio, if we would take that out and simply play the C major arpeggio, the triad without the seventh, uh, it doesn't have the same feel. And we could add the seventh, of course, in other places. We could add it on the G string or even down here in the fifth string. Uh, but by adding it right here at the top, it has a really cool feel to it where we have a we have a nice consonance and then we have a nice dissonance, but a very cool dissonance with the major seventh. Now let's take our C major arpeggio and let's move it down to second inversion. So it starts here on G. We'll go to there. And I'm gonna add that note, the F sharp, so it's a half step higher than the G. So. And you're hearing this half step. Now this note is definitely dissonant over the C chord it would be the raised fourth, so from a Lydian scale, basically. And it sounds really, really nice in combination with the G just above it. So let's check this out again. Very, very cool sound. And again, this G note really sets up our ears very nicely for this F sharp. This dissonance, it just kind of hangs there. 
We can do the same thing here. We've got G. We can go to F sharp, and this sounds really cool in combination. Very, very cool sound. If you like the sound of that sharp four, that Lydian feel, I've got another video here you might want to check out that's called Five Awesome Lydian Guitar Licks You Should Know. It's really cool if you like the Lydian sound, you might want to check out that video. So here is our C major chord again, and we're going to basically be uh, working with this Lydian scale stuff. It sounds really cool, but we're going to focus, of course, on the half steps to listen to how that we can create tension using them. So if we go to, let's say, the eighth fret of the high E string, that is the C note, and that's the root of the C chord. And of course, we can go down a half step. And now we've got a B note, which sounds really cool. We can do the same thing on the next string, string number two. If we play this eighth fret, this is G, it's in the C chord. There's F sharp, that's a sharp 11. So either one of those pairs of half steps, we can make some really cool uh, little licks out of. So here's, a, here's some simple ones. Play that for you again. Very, very cool. I'll do it for you one more time. I'm taking liberties here with the rhythm. Really hear those half steps creating a lot of cool, great tension there. So far we've talked about creating tension and releasing tension using half steps over major chords or a major key. And then we talked about it over the Lydian mode when we had the C chords. Now let's talk about doing it over a minor key. So we've got a nice little backing track in E minor. Let's take a listen. Really cool sound there. Let's try another one. There's the other half step in the key. A lot of cool tension created and released. Cool. So there it works similarly as in major keys or over major chords. The difference here in this particular backing track, we've got two chords. We've got C and we've got E minor. Okay. And in these cases here, I, I played uh, C, F sharp going up to G, which is in the C chord. That F sharp note is the raised 11th over the C chord. And then when the E minor chord came, I played a C note, B note bent up to C. This is definitely not in the E minor chord. But the B note is, so we resolve all this massive tension here. Now we could have reversed those. Let's hear that backing track again and let's flip it around. So I'll play uh, the C note first. So here's the root of the current chord, C major. There's the major seventh of that chord. And now there's the third of the E minor chord. And that's F sharp, the ninth of this chord, so it's tense. There's the seventh of that chord, the major seventh. There's three of this chord, the minor third. And there's the ninth of the E minor. So regardless of which pair of half steps uh, you play over either chord, there, it's, one of the notes is going to be tense, one of the notes is not going to be tense. And that's true for every single chord in any key, any major or minor key with one exception. Depending upon what mode you're in, there will be one chord out of the seven possible chords where that is not true, and both of the half steps will be dissonant. In other words, where the half step is six and seven, instead of one of the notes being the root, the third, or the fifth. So six out of the seven possible triads in any standard major or minor key or any of the standard modes will have always 
one consonant pitch, one dissonant pitch. That means there's going to be one place where you can create massive amounts of tension and one place within those half steps where you can resolve that tension and release it. And that's a really cool tool to use in combination with all the regular things you would normally play anyway. The normal licks and techniques and phrases that you would normally do. Being aware of where these half steps are and how they function over each chord and how they feel when you play them is a really, really cool way to extract much, much more emotion out of whatever it is that you're playing. Now let's talk about how do you practice this stuff? How do you take the concepts that we talked about in this video of creating and releasing tension using half steps? How do you use this in your own playing? In all of the examples that I gave you, we just isolated the half steps to show you which note was tense and which note was you know, releasing the tension or resolving the tension which note was dissonant, which note was consonant over the given chord, right? But in real life, you're probably not going to make solos out of just two notes and a bunch of half steps. You're going to play all the, the usual things that you normally do, techniques, licks, phrases, all of those sorts of things when you're creating solos or improvising solos or writing melodies or writing songs or whatever. So we, it, within any normal lick or scale sequence or anything like that, you're going to come upon half steps within that phrase or that technique or that lick. And you can pause there to extract the emotion out of those half steps by just simply slowing down on one or both notes of the half step to really you can maybe extend, hold the note out, let it sustain, do a nice bend, whatever you want to do to get more feeling out of the phrase by milking the half steps longer and playing with the tension and then resolving it. That's how you would want to really use this stuff. At least that's one way that you can really use and practice this. Take a normal lick, identify that where the half steps are, then figure out which one of these notes over the given chord that I'm that's being played in the background, which one of these is in the chord, which one is not. So where is the dissonance, where is the consonance, where is the tension, where is the resolution? And experiment, improvise, bending, holding, sliding, you know, sustaining the notes, nice vibrato, to, to play with that dissonance and then resolve it. If you want to learn how to make any lick you know sound even better, I'm going to show you how in my new free ebook titled The Secret to Adding Fire and Emotion to Any Guitar Lick. It's totally free. Click on the link below to download your copy and make every lick you know sound even better. Now, if you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, click on that notification bell so that YouTube tells you when I publish a new video, because if you don't click on that notification bell, YouTube won't tell you. And hit the like button. And let me know by leaving a comment below what other topics you'd like me to make new videos on. I often make new videos based upon requests that people have in the comments section.